In today's video, we are going to explore powerful Sri Aurobindo quotes that will inspire and change your life. Let's get started. True knowledge is not attained by thinking. It is what you are. It is what you become. To listen to some devout people, one would imagine that God never laughs. They prove to me by convincing reasons that God does not exist. Afterwards, I saw God, for he came and embraced me. And now, what am I to believe? The reasoning of others or my own experience? Truth is what the soul has seen and experienced. The rest is appearance, prejudice, and opinion. There is nothing mind can do that cannot be better done in the mind's immobility and thought-free stillness. When mind is still, then truth gets her chance to be heard in the purity of the silence. There are four great events in history. The siege of Troy, the life and crucifixion of Christ, the exile of Krishna and Vrindavan, and the colloquy on the field of Kaushetra. The siege of Troy created Hellas, exile, and Brindabon created devotional religion. For before there was only meditation and worship, Christ from his cross humanized Europe. The colloquy at Korshetra will yet liberate humanity. The yoga we practice is not for ourselves alone, but for the divine. Its aim is to work out the will of the divine in the world, to effect a spiritual transformation, and to bring down a divine nature and a divine life into the mental, vital, and physical nature and life of humanity. Its object is not personal. Mukti, although Mukti is a necessary condition of the yoga, but the liberation and transformation of the human being. It is not personal, Ananda, but the bringing down of the divine, Ananda, Christ's kingdom of heaven. Arsita Yuga upon the earth. The whole world yearns after freedom, yet each creature is in love with his chains. This is the first paradox and extricable knot of our nature. The supreme state of human love is the unity of one soul in two bodies. The supreme end is the freedom of the spirit. The spiritual path is one of falling on your face, getting up, brushing yourself off, turning and looking sheepishly at God, and then taking the next step. The soul in man is greater than his fate. The progressive growth of the finite consciousness of man towards this self, towards the universal, the eternal, the infinite. In a word, his growth into spiritual consciousness by the development of his ordinary, ignorant, natural being into 
and illumined divine nature. This is for Indian thinking, the significance of life and the aim of human existence. The practice of yoga brings us face to face with the extraordinary complexity of our own being. The only work that spiritually purifies us is that which is done without personal motives. The mind of an ordinary man is truly near the heart. The human mind moves always forward, alters its viewpoint, and enlarges its thought substance and the effect of these changes is to render past systems of thinking obsolete or when they are preserved to extend to modify and subtly or visibly to alter their value. The great are strongest when they stand alone. A God-given might of being is their force. The fly that touches honey cannot use its wings. So too the soul that clings to spiritual sweetness ruins its freedom and hinders contemplation. The first principle of true teaching is that nothing can be taught. The first and the most important thing is to know that life is one and immortal. Only the forms, countless in number, are transient and brittle. The life everlasting is independent of any form but manifests itself in all forms. Life then does not die, but the forms are dissolved. The existence of poverty is the proof of an unjust and ill-organized society, and our public charities are but the first tardy awakening in the conscience of a robber. The divine truth is greater than any religion or creed or scripture or idea or philosophy. The deeper we look, the more we shall be convinced that the one thing wanting which we must strive to acquire before all others is strength, physical strength, mental strength, moral strength, but above all, spiritual strength, which is the one inexhaustible and imperishable source of all the others. If we have strength, everything else will be added to us easily and naturally. The consciousness of the seer is a greater power for knowledge than the consciousness of the thinker. 
the perceptual power of the inner sight is greater and more direct than the perceptual power of thoughts. The business of both parent and teacher is to enable and to help the child to educate himself, to develop his own intellectual, moral, aesthetic, and practical capacities, and to grow freely as an organic being, not to be needed and pressured into form like an inert plastic material. The atheist is God playing at hide and seek with himself. The anarchic is the true divine state of man in the end as in the beginning. But in between, it would lead us straight to the devil and his kingdom. The aggressive and quite illogical idea of a single religion for all mankind, a religion universal by the very force of its narrowness, one set of dogmas, one cult, one system of ceremonies, one ecclesiastical ordinance, one array of prohibitions and injunctions which all minds must accept on peril of persecution by men and spiritual rejection or eternal punishment by God. That grotesque creation of human unreason which has been the parent of so much intolerance cruelty and obscurantism and aggressive fanaticism has never been able to take firm hold of the Indian mentality. Suffering makes us capable of the full force of the master of the light. It makes us capable also to bear the utter play of the master of power. Pain is the key that opens the gates of strength. It is the high road that leads to the city of beatitude. Sit in meditation, but do not think. Look only at your mind. You will see thoughts coming into it before they can enter. Throw these away from your mind till your mind is capable of entire silence. Sin and virtue are a game of resistance we play with God in his efforts to draw us towards perfection. Safety lies in tending towards our highest and not in resting content with an inferior potentiality. To rest in or follow after an inferior potentiality may seem safe, rational, comfortable, easy, but it ends badly. In some futility or in a mere circling down the abyss or in a stagnant morass. Our right and natural road is towards the summits. Religions, creeds, and forms are only a characteristic outward sign of the spiritual impulsion and religion itself is the intensive action by which it tries to find its inward force. Its expansive movement comes in the thought which it throws out 
on life. The ideals which open up new horizons and which the intellect accepts and life labors to assimilate. Physical education for the body to be effective must be rigorous and detailed, far-sighted and methodological. This will be translated into habits. These habits should be controlled and disciplined while remaining flexible enough to adapt themselves to circumstances and to the needs of growth and development of the being. Perfect health, sincerity, honesty, straightforwardness, courage, disinterestedness, unselfishness, patience, endurance, perseverance, peace, calm, self-control are all things that are taught infinitely better by example than by beautiful speeches. Peace is the first condition without which nothing else can be stable. Outside and above the mind, there is the play of a consciousness which is lighted by the higher truth. But man is not conscious of it and of that he has to be conscious. Our human knowledge is a candle burnt on a dim altar to a sun vast truth. Our actual enemy is not any force exterior to ourselves, but our own crying weakness, our cowardice, our selfishness, our hypocrisy, our pure blind sentimentalism. One who loves God finds the object of his love everywhere. My love is not a hunger of the heart. My love is not a craving of the flesh. It came to me from God, to God returns. My God is love and sweetly suffers all. Man is a transitional being. He is not final. The step from man to Superman is the next approaching achievement in the earth evolution. It is inevitable because it is at once the intention of the inner spirit and the logic of nature's process. Love is the keynote. Joy is the music. Knowledge is the performer. The infinite all is the composer and audience. Live within. Be not shaken by outward happenings. Live according to nature. Runs the maxim of the West. But according to what nature, the nature of the body or the nature which exceeds the body. This first we ought to determine. Life is life, whether in a cat or dog or man. There is no difference there between a cat or a man. The idea of difference is a human conception for man's own advantage. Life is life, whether in a cat or dog or man. There is no difference there between a cat or a man. The idea of difference is a human conception for man's own advantage. Is it true that existence consists only in the action of energy? Or is it not rather that energy is an output of existence? India of the ages is not dead, nor has she spoken her last creative word. She lives and has still something to do for herself 
and the human peoples. In order to see, you have to stop being in the middle of the picture. If a religion is not universal, it cannot be eternal. A narrow religion, a sectarian religion, an exclusive religion can live only for a limited time and a limited purpose. Hinduism gave itself no name because it set itself no sectarian limits. It claimed no universal adhesion, asserted no soul infallible dogma, set up no single narrow path or gate of salvation. It was less a creed or cult than a continuously enlarging tradition of the God-ward endeavor of the human spirit. An immense, many-sided, and many-staged provision for spiritual self-building and self-finding. It had some right to speak of itself by the only name it knew, the eternal religion, Santana Dharma. He who chooses the infinite has been chosen by the infinite. Genius discovers a system, average talent stereotypes, until it is shattered by fresh genius. For the powers of our mind, life and body are bound to their own limitations, and however high they may rise, or however widely expand, they cannot rise beyond them. But still, mental man can open to what is beyond him and call down a supermental light, truth, and power to work in him and do what the mind cannot do. If mind cannot, by effort, become what is beyond mind, super mind can descend and transform mind into its own substance. Evolution of consciousness is a central motive of terrestrial existence. Everyone has in him something divine, something his own, a chance of perfection and strength in however small a spear which God offers him to take or refuse. The task is to find it, develop it, and use it. The chief aim of education should be to help the growing soul to draw out that in itself which is best and make it perfect for a noble use. Each victory gained over oneself means new strength to gain more victories. Do not belong to the past dawns, but to the noons of future. Detachment is the beginning of mastery. Delight is the secret. Learn a pure delight, and thou shalt learn of God. What then was the commencement of the whole matter? Existence that multiplied itself for sheer delight of being and plunged into numberless trillions of forms, so that it might find itself innumerably. Death is but changing of our robes to wait in wedding garments at the Eternal's gate. Care not for time and success. Act out thy part, whether it be to fail or to prosper. By your stumbling, the world is perfected. By our stumbling, the world is perfected. But few are those who tread the sunlit path. Only the pure in soul can walk in light. But difficulties were made to be overcome, and if the supreme will is there, they will be overcome. Be conscious first of thyself within, then think and act. All living thought is a world in preparation. All real act is a thought manifested. The material world exists because an idea began to play in divine self-consciousness. Arise, transcend thyself. Thou art man, and the whole nature of man is to become more than himself. An aimless life is always a troubled life. Every individual should have an aim. 
But do not forget that the quality of your aim will depend the quality of your life. Your aim should be high and wide, generous and disinterested. This will make your life precious to yourself and to others. Whatever your ideal, it cannot be perfectly realized unless you have realized perfection in yourself. All thoughts, desires, conventions, attachments, which come from the outside, must be ruthlessly pushed away. All fanaticism is false because it is a contradiction of the very nature of God and of truth. Truth cannot be shut up in a single book, Bible, or Veda, or Quran, or in a single religion. The divine being is eternal and universal and infinite and cannot be the sole property of the Muslims or the Semitic religions only. Those that happen to be in a line from the Bible and to have Jewish or Arabian prophets for their founders. All existence is a manifestation of God. A thought is an arrow shot at the truth. It can hit a point, but not cover the whole target. But the archer is too well satisfied with his success to ask anything farther. A quiet mind does not mean that there will be no thoughts or mental movements at all, but that these will be on the surface and you will feel your true being within, separate from them, observing but not carried away. Stand aside and watch the working of the divine power in yourself. For we perceive that this miraculous development is not the result of our own efforts. An eternal perfection is molding us into its own image. Yoga is a generic name for any discipline by which one attempts to pass out of the limits of one's ordinary mental consciousness into a greater spiritual consciousness. While doing work, if the mind continues to be active, let it be so. But there must be at the same time a capacity for silence. When I had the dividing reason, I shrank from many things. After I had lost it in sight, I hunted through the world for the ugly and the repellent, but I could no longer find them. What the soul sees and has experience, that it knows. The rest is appearance prejudice and opinion. What is required is faith. Man has body, life, and mind, but that is not all that constitutes man. He has risen to the mind as a result of evolution. Now a higher consciousness will be evolved. This I call supermind. It is the instrument of the divine consciousness, the truth consciousness. We have to create strength where it did not exist before. We have to change our natures and become new men with new hearts to be born again. We need a nucleus of men in whom the Shakti is developed to its uttermost extent, in whom it fills every corner of the personality and overflows to fertilize the earth. These having the fire of Bawani in their hearts and brains will go forth and carry the flame to every nook and cranny of our land. We cannot afford to raise any institution to the rank of a fetish. 
To do so would be simply to become the slaves of our own machinery. Watch the two indignantly righteous. Before long, you will find them committing or condoning the very offense which they have so fiercely censured. Trust the divine power and she will free the godlike elements in you and shape all into an expression of divine nature. Please let us know your favorite quotes from these powerful Sri Arobonito quotes in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.